From our studios in New York City, it's the Martha Stewart Show. Plus, top chef Ellen Allegretti is making us brunch. Five-star dining just became affordable. Next. Coming up, two delicious recipes you'll want to make next time you're serving brunch. favorite ways to entertain is to host a brunch for friends and family and maybe that's because I have 200 chickens who provide me with the most amazing eggs and brunch is like the nicest time to serve eggs don't you think Ellen? It is. Ellen it is. Allegretti has just um, opened a new restaurant uh, La Promenade des, des Anglais. Des Anglais correct. Uh, right here on 26th Street. No 23rd, 23rd Street. Oh I'm so anxious to come I haven't come yet my sister had the most wonderful lunch there and uh, blogged about it because she was was so impressed. Um, but how would you describe your uh, new cuisine? Uh, uh, it's from the French Riviera with uh, the... That's, uh, that's where you grew up? Yes, that's where yes. I grew up, you know, and I had uh, the Italian uh, influence, the Spanish influence, also like uh, the South Africa, uh, South, uh, North Africa. North Africa, uh, right across the, yes. right across the sea that's correct, from, that's correct. from the south of France. And um, so you have um, many dishes on your brunch menu, like what? Uh, we do have the croque monsieur, we do have the French sauce, but we do have also eggs, crepe, uh, we have also... Omelette? Yeah, the, the omelette. Um, one of my favorites is the poached eggs with uh, the panisse, the pepperonata oh. and the oven dry prosciutto. Oh, yeah. It's very like, you know, into fall and it's great. You know, yeah. So, so and I just asked him um, what time he got home this morning from the restaurant last night's dinner and he said 6 a.m. Yeah. So are you, uh, what are you living on? Uh, what, kind of, what kind of energy are you living uh, on? You know, that's the you don't want to know. That's the restaurant Red life, Bull is right? great. Oh, Red Bull. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, um, Ellen, um, has, uh, we, chose, we went through um, some of the uh, offerings at the restaurant and we thought we would learn how to make almond crusted French toast. That's correct. So, um, we had to make the topping. Yes, we're going to start with the frangipan. Okay. So we're going to put like the almond paste. Okay, so that's a cup of almond a paste. A cup of almond paste. Which you can buy um, already uh, made into almond paste. You don't have to grind your own almonds. No, you don't. And we're gonna uh, add, like stick a stick of butter. butter. Okay. We're going to add uh, the eggs and we're going to add the flour. Okay. And the recipe is on our website at MarthaStewart.com. Just going to grate a little bit of the lemon zest. Oh, yummy. Yeah. See, I like lemon and almond. I think it really is yeah. nice together. So two eggs, zest of half a lemon, and two tablespoons Correct. of flour. We're just so, going to mix until it's okay. nice and smooth. Okay. And then... So I'm going to go to the next this one. This is going to top the actual toast. That's going to top, like, the toast. So okay. I'm going to move to the next one. Yep. We're going to start with the apple. Just going to peel the apple. Any kind of apple will work, you know, for that recipe. So... Okay, so frangipan. This could be used as a tart filling too. Yes, you can use yeah. it as a tart. So there's a little bit of, you know, some tips like you can just do it two or three days in advance. You keep it in the refrigerator. It works. Just like take it out like half an hour before you're going to use it to make sure it's going to be nice and soft. Yeah, but we're always looking for unusual ways to serve French toast using, and I, I like to use leftover brioche or French bread. That's Baguette correct. is good. Uh, a Pullman loaf is good. What do you use? So we're going to cut the apple into a wedge and we're going to core it. And this is a kind of autumnal version because apples are so plentiful right now. It's yeah, so we delicious. We are into the uh, picking apple. Yes. We have the swipe of the frangipan, you know. And, uh, oh, okay, we do. Okay. So we don't have to worry about it. So now that I have the apple wedges. cut in wedges and okay. core, so we're going to take them and we're going to put it into a soda pan with uh, butter. Okay. So and we're going to cook it, you know, on so each side, like for like 30 seconds to one minute to give them a nice coloration. On the meantime, should I'm going to, yes, I'm going to ask you to prepare like the mix for the French toast. Okay. So we are just mixing <coughs> so uh, three eggs, three eggs, the milk, heavy cream, heavy cream, a tablespoon of cinnamon. It could be milk. It could be milk yeah. also, you know, so the better cream is a little bit more richer, you know, a tablespoon of cinnamon and one tablespoon on the almond extract. Mm, yeah. So we just seal the, the apple. So we have 
the apple already seared. Oh, that we're gonna so, put it. so you're really just kind of browning them, making yes. them making them cook without cook. falling apart. So now we're gonna take them and we're gonna put them into the maple syrup, and we're gonna finish it cooking. Oh, so that's just pure maple syrup. Pure maple syrup. Oh, how nice. Yes. Ah. So now we have them. You know, they're gonna finish cooking. So this is the uh, custard mixture in which you're going to soak the bread? Yes. Okay. So now I'm going to go into the bread. So the bread you just cut in half. You're going to trim the crust of the bread. And you're going to cut the bread into a square. Um, into a square. You, at home you can do it just a regular slice, you know, and do like a regular fresh toast. I just want... But you always take the crust off? Yes. I just want to make it a little bit more fancier, you know, at the restaurant. Oh, of course. So we are using a nice brioche. Here, I'll take that. Take a little crusts away from you so that you don't have Thank that. Thank you. So you could, each slice you can do like, you know, four cubes. Yeah, nice. That you're going to put it inside the mix. You're going to probably like for 30 seconds, you're going to soak them. And after you're going to... See, I, I, I've never made square French toast. Always sliced. Yes. Yeah, it's just like nice. one more time, just to make yeah. a sexy shape. Yeah. Of it, yeah. Which is something LM thinks about at 6 a.m. in the morning, right? Oh, my God. So now you How have... How do you have the energy? You know, so the, uh, they're soaked, so we're going to put it inside the Lovely. medium heat so, canola like oil. Canola oil. Yes. Okay. And we're going to fried it, you know, basically, you know, on each side, you know, so for like a minute. Okay. Okay. So yep. just give a little bit of the color. Oh, yes. Okay. So I do have it ready right here. So what we're going to do, we take one piece here. of the um, French toast that we're going to spread the frangipan on the top of it. Nicely done, you know, and we're going to put it under a broiler, okay? So oh, you under have the to, broiler. Yeah, under ah. the broiler. So you have to make sure you turn it on, you know, half an hour before. It needs to be very, very nice and hot. Otherwise, it will melt it before it's going to get, like, uh, a nice coloration. Oh, so here it is. Yeah, here it is. Okay. So now we have our French toast. I'm just going to go back and pick up, you know... Oh, the apples? My apple. Now, how many pieces per person? Oh, uh, you put, like, two or three. Okay. You know, some, uh, so Oops. here we go. So I'm going to take the apple. So we're just going to put it yeah, perfectly. We're going to put it whatever you want, between uh, the French toast. That maple syrup under the smells French toast. so good. Really. We're going to take a little bit of the French maple syrup, the maple syrup and we're going to just drizzle it around. Mm. So good. And, you know, we're going to top it a little bit with some toasted almonds. Now, wouldn't your family be surprised if this is the French toast you offer them on uh, Sunday morning? So pretty and really very much like regular old French toast, only it's different. It is. It's different, uh, it is. and it's uh, from Alain's uh, new brunch menu. And when we come back, there's going to be yet another fantastic thing to make with Alain. How pretty. Alain is going to show us how to make another delicious recipe that's perfect to serve uh, for a really wonderful brunch. Fall brunch, On yeah. a weekend, on a weekday, depending on what you're up to. Uh, so this is going to, uh, this is called croque monsieur. Croque monsieur, Now, what yes. does that mean, croque monsieur? Uh, really, the French translation means, like, bite of a man, you know, so the, uh, but it's really it's just a sandwich that... Right. Uh, <laughs> With bread. Hopefully, uh, hopefully it's just a sandwich. With bread, like a white sauce, uh, gruyere cheese, and uh, French ham. So is that bechamel? That's bechamel, Oh, okay. Yes. So, you, if, so master your bechamel making, to, and if you want to practice making bechamel, this is a good use for it, right? That's correct. Yes, okay. So what do you do first? So we're going to start with the bechamel first. Oh, okay. So we have the roux, who is already cooking. The roux is uh, uh, the butter and uh, the flour mixed so together. Two tablespoons of butter and two tablespoons of, uh, flour. of flour that we're uh, going to add together. Yes, for like a minute, we're okay. going to add the milk. 
Okay. We're gonna mix it up, you know, so, and we're gonna cook it like this for three to four minutes okay. until it's gonna like be nice and thick. Okay. Okay. So uh, should I just keep stirring that? That's correct. Okay, I'll stir that. Okay, so we have already the bechamel made. Oh. So we don't have to worry. Okay. You know, so it's just but that's to show it. You. No salt, that's no it. pepper. Well, we put a little bit of salt and yeah. pepper, but you know, so the, keep in mind the okay. uh, the cheese is gonna bring a little bit of saltiness, so okay. you don't want to um, be too salty. And the ham might too. If yes, it's, that's yeah. correct. Okay. So now we have two slices of uh, white cumin well, bread. Well, now I've never seen slice that thin. This is that's right. Paper thin. So we, we do it. This we is do a it, sixteenth of an inch. We do it to the slicer, but at home you can just do build it as a regular sandwich. Right. Okay. So we have that. We're gonna take. A so spatula. it has to be this way on top of one yes, another. Oh, okay. On top of it. So we're gonna take a, the bechamel and we're gonna spread it, you know, the, across, you know, the bread. Okay. You know, it's gonna help. You know, so to thick it. Is this the inside or the outside? That's the inside. Okay. And it's going to help also to uh, glue the the, the crock mixture together. Okay. Hmm. That, now this is a traditional, very traditional recipe. Yes. But that's every good. chef seems to make it differently. You all have your own little techniques. Yeah, we do want to make it fancy yeah. at the restaurant. Yeah. So. So it, now you have so, it. You don't so put you too can't, much. So it's just not an old ham and cheese. No. So we're going to add... That you charge how much for? Uh, we are not talking about money. No. <laughs> so we're going to add the, the ham and the cheese. It's the experience itself. It's worth it, right? Agree. As your sister I said. I mean, that's right. And it's what you want. I mean, you want to go out and sit down and have a fabulous, fabulous, different thing. But, um, but a little familiar is always good. Okay. So ham first. The ham first. Okay. After we put the cheese. Now, what kind of ham is this? Uh, French ham. You can okay. use a smoked ham. Like a bayonne? You know, or? Some, yeah. W whatever ham you, you really like, it really doesn't make any difference. Okay. You know, so we build it like that. We're going to add more bechamel to s make sure like, the, the sandwich is going to stick. Okay. You want the bread to stick it. And now the funny part is to roll it. Oh, this is rolled. Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. And we have to make sure we tighten it up. I you told know. you it was tradition with a twist. That's what it is. Okay. Okay, I'm going to try to get mine done too. Mm. So this is another technique that's chef's technique. So we're going to put it into a plastic wrap. And we're gonna now, is this what the kind of croque monsieur that you grew up with? Or no, did you make this? All. You made this up. Your mother didn't you do this. You just take like an authentic recipe and you make it fancy. Yeah. So now we're going to tighten it up. We're going to roll it. We're going to squeeze it. Mm-hmm. Oh, so that's why we overlapped like that. Yes. Oh, and look how we're going to put it in the fridge. You can make it like one or two days in advance. Oh, can you? you know, so, yeah, no problem. Okay. You know, so there needs to be nice um, and cold. Mm. Okay. Mine turned out very well. Yeah, you did a pretty good job. If I do say so myself. Mine's a little fatter than yours. Not you as tight. You didn't it up to me. Yeah. Enough. Is that but, okay? Yeah, that, that, that's fine. Okay. So, we so have in the fridge. Mixer. In the okay. fridge. You know, you can do it one more time the day before. It's no problem. Okay. So now we're going to go into uh, the mustard violet sauce. So you have a cup, a half a cup of port that we're going to add uh, a quarter of cup. Of mustard violet. Mustard violet. Okay, so violet mustard sauce. Violet mustard sauce. Okay. So we have the wine, the port, you're going to add the grape. Oh, big, big, beautiful um, and you're gonna cook it. Grapes. You're going to cook it until it's completely dry. Okay. So we have it already dry over here. Okay. We're going to put it into a Vita prep. We're going to add the mustard. Oh, and creme fraiche. And the creme fraiche. You have two tablespoons of Dijon mustard and you have a quarter of a cup of the creme fraiche. Mm. Very nice. Beautiful. So we're okay. going to cover it up. Oh, the right here. And we're going to turn it on and we're going to mix it. Look until at the color. Well, that's what we call it violet. Oh, you know, so oh the, so I the see. So the no violets in it. There's no violet. Oh. Inside. So we're going to cook it wondering. until like it's completely smooth. So we have okay. already made. So we're going to go to the next step. So we have our croque monsieur who is already uh, rolled. So we're gonna put it into the panko. Okay, so no bread, no egg. No, no bread, okay. nothing, uh, no eggs. 
So this is Japanese breadcrumbs, the panko. If you haven't used them for breading things, they puff up and are very beautiful when they're cooked. So we are... Uh, and what kind of oil? Canola oil. Okay, it's canola oil. And now again. we're going to put it inside and we're going to fry it. Okay. Mm, really so to make sure, like, you know, they are nice and crispy, you know, so not all the fun. way um, So the yeah, croque monsieur are, are, are fried, uh, One generally. more time. Yeah, yeah, this one I really wanted to, you know, so that you can definitely do it, uh, you know, as a sandwich, and you have to fry it also. So now I do have my croque monsieur ready, you know, I do have my violet mustard ready. So mm. I'm going to drizzle my violet mustard on the bottom of the plate. I'm going to take my croque monsieur. I'm going to split it in half in bias. Oh, look how beautiful. You know, nice and melted. Ah. I'm going to just stay like See, this. that's so different. I'm going to take one fried eggs, but I'm going to put it on the side like this. And here you are, your fancy croque monsieur with the mustard violet <laughs> sauce and the fried that eggs. That is really, really pretty. So, um, really traditional things that we always make but boy are these different uh very very nice Alana. thank you Martha. get some sleep yes i'm okay. going to <laughs> i suggest checking out la promenade des anglais next time you're in new york on 23rd street and 9th avenue Alain, thank you so thank much you, thank you. so beautiful